Jay Keller is back trying to do something no Mr. Olympia competitor has ever done before. Lose the title, come back a year later, and claim it and win it back. And then he reinvented himself in 2009. When he walked out, it was like, wow. And he just rewrote the record books with that, that time. Jay Cutler, the name is enough in bodybuilding sports. He might have retired from bodybuilding today, but he does not seem to have left behind its regime. He was born on August 3, 1973 in Sterling, Worcester, Massachusetts, United States of America. He grew up in a huge family as he was the youngest of seven siblings. During the early years of his life, he started working with his brother in a construction company. Though he was only 11 years old then, he naturally developed a beefy physique. At the age of 18, he joined the gym to lift weights. But he had no idea that one day he would choose bodybuilding as a career. Time passed and he entered college to get a degree in criminal justice in 1993. While he was in college he devoted himself to gym and workout sessions. He liked that and he got so much into weightlifting. He used to do training after his classes. With time, he made some serious progress in his physique and people started noticing him for his robust physique. He received massive encouragement from his trainer Marcos Rodriguez. For the first time ever, he entered the 1992 Gold's Gym Worcester Bodybuilding Championships, at which he took second place. Now after his first bodybuilding competition, he did not waste a single moment and was ready to give his whole life to bodybuilding. He took part in the 1993 NPC Iron Bodies Invitational Show. In 1995, he won the NPC US Tournaments of Champions. He won both teenage and men's heavyweight divisions. Then again in the next year 1996, he won the NPC Nationals. Jay Cutler from Sterling, Massachusetts. In the tradition of other massive bodybuilders from the Bay State, like Paul Quadzilla de Mayo and professional Mike Matarazzo, Jay was already a solid 185 pounds two and a half years ago. At the age of 23, he also earned the ProCard his first official declaration of being a professional bodybuilder which some athletes spend almost 10 years trying. With this, a young aspiring athlete was on the road to becoming a legend. Over the course of the next 10 years, Jay entered a massive 23 competitions. He won 11 of them and was placed among the top 3 in the rest of the tournaments. During this time, he became one of the greatest bodybuilders in the world. But time apart and his life turned into pieces when in 2001 Mr. Olympia Cutler tested positive for banned diuretics but sued and had his second place finish reinstated. It was a very tough time for him but he bounced back like never before. As he went on to win consecutive Arnold Classic titles in 2002, 2003, and 2004 and placed second to Ronnie Coleman in the Mr. Olympia competition four times before claiming the title for the first time in 2006. Ronnie Coleman! Ronnie Coleman! Mr. Mr. Olympia, Olympia! For the seventh straight year! In 2007 he won the Olympia for a second consecutive year and became the third Mr. Olympia in history after Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombia. To win the title in non-consecutive years after defeating the reigning champion Dexter Jackson in 2009. Surprisingly he is the only one to win the title back after losing it. In 2010, he won his fourth Mr. Olympia title by defeating Phil Heath and in 2011 he was the runner-up to Heath at the Mr. Olympia. Jay Cutler! Sadly, in 2012 he was unable to compete at the Mr. Olympia due to a biceps injury. Just after a year, he was placed sixth in the 2013 Mr. Olympia. Throughout his career, Cutler has been on the cover of fitness magazines including Muscle and Fitness, Flex and Muscular Development. He has not competed since 2013 as he bid farewell to bodybuilding in the same year.
He focused on Cutler Nutrition, his bodybuilding supplement business as well as other business ventures through social media. In 2021, he was inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame. But we should know that behind the scenes, while he was outstanding at competitions he worked really hard for it. But you gotta be a little little mental, I think, to do what I did. I, I, I don't wanna, like, sound crazy, but you have to gotta be a little fucked up in the fucking mindset of, like, getting up every day and pushing yourself. And you're eating 12 to 16 ounces of meat and, you know, 100 to 150 grams of carbs every meal and you're doing that seven times and you do it day in, day out. You've got to have a very simple mindset. You know, you can't be social, you can't be out doing a lot of other activities. So you put on the blinders and you have tunnel vision on what that ultimate goal is. I was always on track with everything. I mean, I, everything was structured. I lived in a fucking box. Being a legend in bodybuilding, he paid a hefty price. He worked day and night to succeed as an entrepreneur, a professional competitor, and a protagonist in the sport. To become a competitive bodybuilder, he has to sacrifice almost everything. He did training four times a day and slept six to eight hours. So, if you calculate the time of the day together, there is really not much else going on in his life. At last, many athletes want to find a competitive edge to help them go faster in bodybuilding or any sport. But some athletes cross the line and cheat by taking banned substances or using banned methods. Not just that, they put themselves in serious health issues as taking the banned substance can destroy and cause serious damage to the athletic career. When the four-time Mr. Olympia Jay Cutler found himself in a doping case, he accepted it with dignity, and later on he stopped taking banned substances. So, is it right to take steroids to win the competition? What do you think? Do comment on your perspective on taking banned substances in sports in the comment box and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.